right, that's it. Enough waiting. So uh, we start and uh, I would like to welcome you to the Bronkula studio. My name is Urs Recher and I have the pleasure to um, yeah, guide you through this product insight webinar about softboxes. Um, I will first of all, before I start talking about uh, Softlight, I would like to uh, introduce this entire series of webinars that we are setting up for you guys. Um, we start today with a product insight about softboxes and uh, one week from today, I will actually implement the knowledge that we gained today um, on a live shoot with a model. So we will have a very close look at how the light of softboxes interacts with the skin of a model. So this will be a live shooting, implementing what we learned today. And in this rhythm, we continue. So let's say in two weeks from today, I will have product insight about the, the Scoro power pack. And the week after this, um, we actually make a high speed shooting using some of the features of the score pack like this. Uh, we go through all summer until September and then um, with a few interruptions because once in a while I go on, uh, on holiday, on vacation. But basically this keeps me busy all summer. Okay, um, questions is the next thing I would like to talk to you about. And um, you can ask questions today, but not um, by talking, I cannot invite you on stage with a video, but you can use the chat. So dial in your questions in the, in the chat. And I have a colleague who is moderating these questions. Once in a while, I will leave here and go over there to my laptop, either to uh, check the questions and uh, to answer them. Of course, I will do this once or twice during the session, but most of the questions I will keep for the end of the sessions for today. This should happen in about 45 to 50 minutes and answer them at the very end of the session. Um, there's another reason why I might uh, want to go over there to my laptop, because I want to show uh, you some photographs that uh, illustrate what I explain here theoretically with soft boxes, with accessories, so that, uh, that you see a photograph, what this actually means lighting-wise, what I explain here. If, however, your question is not properly answered today, or if we have to skip it for uh, time reasons or whatever, there is another chance to ask me questions about lighting. And this is happening on a weekly basis on Friday afternoon Swiss time. I will be logging in during a um, live Instagram chat uh, via the Broncolor channel. So there you can uh, ask me anything about lighting and I will be online for at least half an hour and answering anything you want to know about studio lighting. As I said, this is going to happen at 2 o'clock p.m. Swiss time. And this is, uh, for example, as well, 2 o'clock p.m. Uh, in most of African countries, like, uh, for example, uh, South Africa, Cape Town. However, we only uh, schedule this once. And this means that in Tokyo, it's already 9 p.m. In Hong Kong, 8 p.m. In Jakarta, it will be 7 p.m. And then in Mumbai, India, it will be 5.30 in the afternoon. In Tehran, it will be 4.30. Istanbul, getting closer to Swiss timing, it will be, be, it will be 3 uh, p.m. in the afternoon. And then if we go to the other side of the ocean, in New York City, we have to get up already at 8 o'clock on Friday to ask me something. And I'm very sorry for the guys in L.A., because if you want to ask me something from LA, you have to do this at five o'clock in the morning, your time, very sorry for that. Right, okay, so what happens today? Um, soft boxes, yes. Accessories, different sizes, different shapes, but very, first of all, I would like to set up one of these soft boxes. Okay, so what you get in the box when you order a soft box is uh, diffusing material, and um, no reflective material and the diffuser set. Okay, make sure that if you order softbox, that you do not forget to order as well the adapter ring. This adapter ring, by the way, is not only available for Broncolor lights, but as well for other brands. That's why it's not included because we want um, that you order it according to your equipment. Of course, we prefer, and it makes a lot of sense if you actually uh, order it with the Broncolor bayonet, uh, Broncolor speed ring for these lights. So how to set it up? Um, it's not really rocket science. Huh? So um, here there are these um, the, the sticks. They are already integrated in the, in the reflector and they have a colored end. The adapter ring, the speed ring as well has uh, color marks here. 
And now guess what? Red into red. Okay, so that's actually quite straightforward. There's not a lot you can do wrong. Um, yes, so I start with the, the short side, integrate this into these holes. And there you go. Second, you close the Velcro. And like this, you already can mount it actually on the lamp head. I have here uh, a LED F160 for this. Okay, and now diffusing material. The first one would be the intermediate diffuser. I will talk about the inter intermediate diffuser and the reason why this is in uh, right after this. This is clipped in very simply like that. Okay, and the front diffuser, when I visit studios, I see it 90% mounted the wrong way around, which means this black Velcro goes to the outside. That's not correct. So not like this. You turn it around that the black Velcro is actually inside, that the diffuser is the furthest out possible. And like this, you can really tension it very nicely. So I always do first uh, two opposite sides. Like this, it's nicely stretched. And then the other two sides, and that's it. Very simple, straightforward. To disassemble it, as well, most of the photographers that I see disassembling it, they take out the front and the main diffuser and the intermediate diffuser. You can do it, but you don't have to. So once you put this properly in, you better leave it. You just open the four Velcros and then just take the red sticks out. And like this, you can already put it away. I always fold the, the, the narrow side first, on the other side, like this, and you're ready to go. And uh, you can actually leave it like this. Of course, the, the, the fuses, they will wrinkle a little bit more like that, but this has no influence on the lighting. Right, so talking about soft boxes, it might make sense that we first have a look at hard light. So if we know what the hard light is, um, we probably understand better um, what makes a light soft, what, what are the qualities of a good softbox. And that's what I would like to do next. And I will have no light shaper. I'm just going to reorientate the camera quickly for you that you have the right view here in the studio. Okay, good. And I switch on here my LED. Now I have to fight a little bit because the, um, as you can see, the, the webcam is always like compensating the, the exposure, but we are not talking about exposure. We are talking about the quality of the light. So not the, is it brighter or darker, uh, but about the, the, the quality of the light. And now what we see is here a very sharp uh, shadow of my stand here in front of the wall and the hard light. In this situation, it's almost like a point light source. It's super, super small. And this means when I um, change the distance from the object, now the second shadow here is disturbing. If I change the distance from the light to the object, the shadow does not really change, right? The shadow remains hard. Okay, so this means that a point source a point light source is a hard light, and the point is always a point, no matter how far away it is, okay? As soon as the light shaper, however, becomes a certain size, the distance will be very important, and this will be um, probably the key point of understanding softboxes later on. And uh, you will see that it's not only depending on the absolute size of the light shaper, but on the subjective size of the light shaper. But you have seen before, when I showed you all the softboxes, there are, um, yeah, intermediate diffuser, main diffuser, additional diffusers, uh, edge mask diffusers, and so on and so on. So diffusion is a big, big subject uh, when we talk about softboxes. So what does diffusion do to our light? Is diffusion a guarantee that our lights uh, become soft? And of course, um, if I ask like this, probably the, the answer will be no. Diffusion is 
just um, amplifying the light angle. Okay, so if we have, let me grab this quickly. So if you have a reflector, this reflector has a certain light angle and diffusion just amplifies this light angle, makes the light angle larger, but it does not make the light source bigger. And this is, uh, this is the reason why the light is not becoming softer if we simply diffuse it. Let's have a look at this as well. So I mount this on my LED. And again, I want you to have a close look here at the shadows. I go a little bit further away is this maybe yep something like that and i grab here a diffusion plate this is just acrylic white acrylic plate from the well this one is from the supermarket if you want to use it properly you better get one that's uh, color corrected but for this this works just fine um check out the shadows what happens if i close here like this okay not a lot eh? You see, for example, the corners up here, they become a little brighter. Why? Because the light angle is amplified. Okay, so I have the, the, the light is spread uh, more around the studio. So I have uh, maybe lower contrast, but the shadow definition, that, that's the hardness, how, how detailed are the shadows defined? This does not really change. It only changes, look carefully at the shadow, if I go a little closer with my acrylic to my object, okay? So in the end, I make the light softer, not by diffusion, but when I'm closer, a bigger area here is illuminated. So I amplify the light source and this makes the light softer, okay? And this is one of the key points we have to understand when we want to understand what is a good softbox and what is a bad softbox. So a diffuser, you can put a diffuser on here. If it's a bad diffuser, you don't get a hard light. And I would like to show you this quickly with, um, by comparing a couple of um, softboxes. So I'm going to share my screen with you. All right. So um, these are all the pictures that I'm going to show you today. And we start with this one. And you can already read here on the on the title. So this is a single bad diffuser. Um, no mentioning any brand names. I, the only thing I tell you, this is not a Broncolor softbox. OK, this is a bad softbox, right? OK, why? Yes, we have a diffuser, but this diffuser is not optically is not very dense. So all the light is still centered in the center of the softbox. It's almost like a point light source with a little bit of surroundings. Okay. But uh, most of the light energy is still concentrated here in the center. And this diffuser is almost useless. If you have, for example, reflections of the softbox in a shiny object, like uh, sunglasses uh, or yeah, whatever shiny object, you will see this cross. Unless you burn the softbox very bad, then it's completely white and burned out. But this doesn't make sense. Um, but if you use this for um, um, bottle photography, um, for example, if you would like to create a nice highlight in a red wine bottle, this softbox is useless. You cannot use it for this. Then we go to the next picture, which is a single good diffuser. Let me amplify this a little bit more. OK, this is a single good diffuser. And now it's already, um, you're already talking about bronchial materials. Um, so we, it's still slightly, slightly center weighted because it's single diffuser. OK, By, back here, we still have just the flash tube that's illuminating or backlighting my diffuser. So we still have it center weighted a little bit and we want to spread the light energy even more. And that's why we go here for this double diffusers. Oops, good. I wanted to press this one, yep. Okay, so this is a, a double diffuser, intermediate diffuser. So it's in the end, it's not the flash tube illuminating my front diffuser. It's the first, it's the intermediate diffuser. That's the new light source to illuminate my front diffuser. And that's how we can spread the light energy even better. Okay, so if you want to have, if you want to test your softboxes, just pull, um, put them in front of your camera, close the aperture, shoot them very, very dark, shoot them that they appear gray or bright gray, but not white in your photographs. 
and then have a close look at how the light is distributed. If you have the a super even surface, then yes, your softbox is good. If you have uh, any fancy patterns, light patterns, then um, yeah, obviously your softbox is not good. Right, so I can put this one away and go back on stage. Good. Um, the other thing I would like you to see is the influence of the, the distance on, uh, on the lighting. So for this, I take, um, I can take this soft box here. So it's just a, a rather small soft box. It's a 35 by 60 soft box. It's actually the, the smallest uh, rectangular one we have. And I want you to have a close look at the shadow here again, that will appear in a minute. Um, so again, the hard light, and now I'm softening this light and it is already kind of uh, more diffused and now as the light has a certain size now the distance becomes very very important okay so by taking the light closer it appears bigger as seen from the object the, sub the, the absolute size is not changing it remains a 35 by 60 softbox but when i bring it closer it appears bigger to me right and this makes the light softer. So if I go closer with this, the light becomes softer. If I go further away, it's becoming harder again, right? And if I'm very far away, I'm at the end of the cable, it's almost the same like, um, um, like if I use the bare bulb. And this illustrates very nicely that the distance of a softbox is essential. All right, I can illustrate this differently as well. So I switch this one off, put a little bit further away and show you two other softboxes. So I reposition the camera that you can look straight into my studio. And then I bring in this light with a small box. And I bring in another box. And I put this here. And mm, they are kind of like same size. Kind of, eh? but only as seen from your perspective. Okay, because this soft box is about four times as big as, as, as this one, but it's much further away. If you bring it closer, okay, it's a different story. So this is a 60 by 100, and this is a 35 by 60, okay? But I can easily compensate this by putting it further away. And now these two soft boxes are seen from the model. So you are all the models now. The, these soft boxes have the same size and the light characteristic regarding the shadow definition, regarding the hardness or the softness of the light is identical, okay? We have different, we have uh, different aspects that change. Of course, it's not entirely the same light if we have a soft box at maybe one meter or at three meters, but the hardness or the shadow definition, the harshness of a shadow, if hair is throwing a back, uh, is throwing a shadow, a clearly visible shadow on the background and so on and so on, this depends only on the subjective size of my softbox, not on the absolute size. So if you have a large softbox and you put it far away, it's just counterproductive. If, but if you have a large softbox and you put it very close, then you actually get a very soft light and you're using the softbox as a softbox. Right. I would like to show just very quickly what happens um, if we change the distance for this. I'm going to share the screen again. Okay, there we go. Somehow I did this wrong now. Just doesn't appear. 
then so now it's there. Sorry for that. And I want you to see this. Okay, now it works. Okay, so this is um, a softbox that's pretty far away. Okay, and it has a um, very, let's say, uh, unpleasant appearance here of the, uh, the, the skin is very shiny here as well. Um, we have an unpleasant area here. The, the, the glass itself creates a very dominant, disturbing reflection. And now if I get closer with my softbox, this is the result. Okay, this, is, this can be the same softbox, okay, but I just bring it much closer so it's much softer. The light travels much softer around the face. Um, and it's not creating any harsh reflection here in the glasses. And this is the main subject for next week. So you see it's the same model, the same glasses, even the same softbox by just modifying maybe angles, distances, possibly as well as changing the, taking a larger or a smaller softbox, we can, we have a, a huge and super precise tool to manipulate and the, the appearance of a model's skin, right? And this is the main subject for tomorrow. So to sum it up, um, yes, okay, to sum it up, Yes, different sizes of softboxes are essential. Otherwise, we would not have that many different ones. Um, but it is uh, very important that you use them as well the right way round. Okay, good. So um, this was about sizes. Let's talk about shapes of softboxes. So there are rectangular ones. I think there are like five or six rectangular ones. There are square ones. They are, um, they are very universal, okay? So um, they are, most of the time, they are integrated in, in the kits. They are quite compact for, for the surface they offer. They are super compact. So it's a lot of uh, soft light on a very small space. Um, that's why they are most of the time integrated into in the kits. And then we have the round ones, or kind of round ones, like the oca uh, octagonal ones. Okay, we'll talk about them right in the middle, uh, in a minute. And last but not least, we have the strip light shaped softboxes. So this is like a 30 by 120 centimeters. It's like two sizes in one, okay? If you ask me is, if this softbox is uh, big or small, mm, I don't know what to answer. It's small that way. It's just like a normal reflector like this, like a P70 basically. So I would never call the light in the horizontal way to be um, soft, even if it's diffused, okay? But it's definitely soft that way. And again, I can show this very nicely if I let you have a look at shadows. So I put this on my lamp, then go on full power and let you see these shadows again. Okay, good. So now it's um, horizontal, it's vertical. So let me show you this properly, exactly. So it's vertical, vertical, um, narrow, which means a vertical stand throws a clear shadow because it's hard this way. But this cube here, does not create any shadow because it's soft, okay? So this light is soft uh, in this direction and very hard horizontally. If I flip it around, it's just the opposite, okay? So the vertical shadow disappears and the horizontal reappears. So how can we use this in portrait photography? Let me switch on this light again here. And I switch this one off. So if you use this one in, in portrait photography and you use it vertically, what can you expect? You can expect a rather harsh light from right to left. So I will have a harsh shadow here of the nose. The transition from light to shadow will be very, very sharp. So light, 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 and then all of a sudden dark, black, or yeah, dark shadow. 
On the other side, you can expect very soft shadows below my nose, down, in, uh, down under my chin, and in my eyes. Okay? On the other side, if you turn it around, if you use it like this, it will be much smoother running around my face. Okay, so we will have here a very uh, a lot of light and then less, 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 less. So one soft, nice, long gradation all around the face, soft shadow of the of the nose. But you pay this with a rather harsh shadow below my nose, under the chin, and most probably you will need some fill-in light as well for my eyes. So the big advantage of this is you have two different light characteristics in one. And that's why, uh, I mean, this, of course, is extreme. So, but uh, even talking about rectangular softboxes, like the, the 60 by 100 that I showed before, you have actually two softboxes in one. You can already modify the light characteristic by nothing else than a rotation of the softbox. If, however, you want to work with shadows on the model, on this object or maybe on the background. Let's say if you have something like a three-dimensional posing, like arms in front of the model, or you're shooting um, furniture, chairs, uh, tables, and so on, I would personally recommend that you're using octagonal softboxes. Okay. So as I explained before, that the advantage of, of rectangular softboxes is that you can turn them. Now you can turn an octagonal softbox as long as you want. The light is not going to change. But the shadows these create, they are super, super soft because of the size. And they're even. The shadows don't have this strange behavior that uh, it, it's a, a harsher shadow in one direction and a softer shadow in another direction. OK, so I guess it's time again to have a, couple of, uh, to have a look at a couple of photographs. So, share screen again. Right, so there we go. Okay. Um, so this one comes later. Here, for example, this is um, a hotel room. By the way, it's a hotel in Jakarta, in the Alila Hotel, and it's shot very early in the morning when I just opened the curtains a few centimeters. Okay, so this is a very, very strange shadow because I opened the curtains just a few centimeters. So left, right, it's super, super hard, harder than any strip light. So these shadows are extremely hard as well, those from the vertical lines here. But the other shadows, the vertical ones or the, the horizontal ones, these, they are super, super soft because the, the, the room is quite high, like, uh, I don't know, three meters high. So I have a softbox of 10 centimeters by 300 centimeters. So that's why I get these very strange shadows. All right. Um, then what can I use this for? Um, I was talking about the octagonal softboxes. And if we have a look at this model shot here, and especially if I zoom in, you will see that here on the eyes, it's this. Uh, it's the big octa box, the 150 by uh, octa box 150 coming from the top, and I chose it here because first of all I wanted to have a soft light, and now that's this kind of three-dimensional posing that I said. Okay, that uh, she has uh, her arms, her hands in front of the body, and there are actually shadows, important shadows that appear in the photograph. And if you do this with a rectangular soft box or with a square soft box you might get kind of funny shadows in here. So if you work with something like this, and this is a single softbox light, so not any, there are no fill-in lights around that actually can limit this um, effect. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend, uh, recommend octagonal softboxes to have the softness of this light. Right, okay, then, um, now I show the picture first and the theoretical expla explanation comes afterwards. So let's have a look at this photograph. Um, here the softbox is just here down where my, my hand is. It's a large uh, softbox. It's here in this case, it's a 120 by 150 softbox. So it's the biggest one there is. And it's super, super close because the light angle is extremely aggressive. The light is coming down from the, the floor. And as the light is so aggressive, I would rather uh, use a, um, a super soft light for this. So if you do this with a 
with a smaller softbox or even with a, a normal reflector, she would look like a, like a vampire, okay? But because of the, the light is extremely softened, uh, because of the size of the softbox, I can, uh, I can do this and use this uh, very aggressive angle. But as the softbox is very, very close, this sounds as if I'm running into a problem here, which is the light fall off. Um, because here the, the knees and the, the legs, they are, and, and the hand is very, very close to the softbox. Okay, maybe just the softbox is here just out of the picture frame, and we just have, to have a few centimeters here to the hand. And the head then is like, I don't know, five times further away. So basically, according to the inverse square law, the, the head should have 25 times less light and be either completely dark or the hand heavily, uh, heavily burned out. But it's not the case. So why can we use soft boxes over super short distances in order to have a very uh, soft light, but we are not burning the areas that are super close to the soft box? So let me go back to the screen, to the camera, and explain this to you with an uh, octabox. So I put this one here so that you can see more or less what I'm doing. Right. Okay. So over large distances, let's say if we are, let's take the, the diameter as a thumb rule. If, if we are at one meter 50, if we are at one meter 50 or further away, the softbox behaves like any other light source. So double the distance means uh, two f-stops less, four times less light. But over extremely short distances, the softbox behave differently. If, let's say, I go from one meter to 50 centimeters, you would expect here half the distance, you would expect two f-stops more, four times more light. So it's almost impossible to shoot a portrait over short distances, but we, we want to do this. Because of the, because we want actually to use the softbox as a soft light. The reason is, if I'm very, very close, right, just a few centimeters, I get, of course, a lot of light from the center. But the areas up here all around, they are not really coming down here. Okay. Um, which means when I'm here, only what's only interesting for me is like the, the, the center of the softbox. If I go a little bit further away, of course, I get less light from the center. But let's say this intermediate area here becomes already more important and kind of compensates the light fall off that I normally would expect. If I go even further away, now even less light here from the center according to the inverse square law, but now the entire light of the softbox actually reaches my object. So don't be afraid to put your softboxes as close as possible or as close as you want them to put you're not running into the problems that you have a crazy fall off of the light like you would have from a from a point light source or even let's say a, a normal reflector they are very very surprisingly even over short distances right okay good um let let's have a quick look oh yeah exactly so we talked about um sizes of soft boxes um absolute size of soft boxes, subjective size of soft boxes, um, by choosing a bigger one or a smaller one, putting them further away or closer. But there is one more parameter that's very essential. And that's the angle of a soft box. Let's put this one here and take a very universal soft box here, which is the, the 60 by 100 soft box. Okay, it's um, those that uh, probably uh, that attended the seminar with me that they know already that this is like my, my favorite baby, um, because if you put it far away, you can have uh, very strong lights. If you put it close enough, um, this is one meter already, so you can have super soft lights as well. Uh, you can angle it very nicely as well, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So if the softbox is far away, it's a small one. If it's close, it's a big one. But the angle as well is very important. So if I start angling a softbox, it becomes more like a strip light. 
it is not a strip light, but as seen, it's always important as seen from the object or as seen from the models, you're the models now, it becomes more narrow. So it becomes more hard. It becomes harder, right? So a softbox is only soft when you use the center of the light. At the edges, the light becomes obviously darker because you have less, 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 less light. And now it's black. Okay, so sooner or later the light fades away and becomes harder. So if you think if you're shooting a portrait and you think eh, it looks a little bit dull, it looks, it, I would like to have the, the light somewhat more crispy. Yes, you can choose um, a smaller softbox or you can take the softbox further away. But if you take it further away, that's actually, I would say it's almost illegal because you have a lot of more indirect light in, in the studio. Uh, the skin starts to shine a little bit more. So um, a soft the position of a softbox in the studio is actually given. You cannot still, you cannot only mod, uh, uh, move it around in the studio, okay? So, but by tilting it, you can actually make the light harder and sooner or later you can start working with the gradation that it offers. Because a softbox has, let's say, a light angle of 180 degrees, but left and right of this light angle, it's dark and sooner or later the light has to disappear. So what can we do when we start angling softboxes if we do not direct them straight to the model? For this, I'm going to share the screen again. And then you see there are questions that we will answer right after this. So this will be this one. Okay. So this is like a very, it looks like a very harsh light. Eh? Because here the, the nose shadow is actually quite harsh. I, I filled it in a little bit. And if you zoom in on the eyes, you would probably not expect this to be a softbox. But it is exactly the softbox I'm showing to you right now, the 60 by 100, but I tilt it away. So I get only this kind of cut-like highlights here in the eyes. And because I tilt it so far away, I get nice gradations here as well to the side. Normally, if you direct the softbox straight to the model it's always let's say the as you can see in the eyes the light is coming from the right so this would be here on the right this would be the brightest part and then it turns dark okay and um, so only one gradation from light to shadow but when i start tilting softboxes i have the chance to work uh, with gradations on both sides but as well on the light on the side where the light is coming from and this of course gives me much more three-dimensionality and as the light is harder, it creates as well, not just these sometimes too soft highlights on shiny parts of the skin. So it really, if you, it really brings out the texture of the skin. And if you have a beautiful face, a beautiful skin like hers, I think we should show this in our photographs and not kill the skin by using overly soft or uh, overly soft lights, or of course, um, by retouching them the wrong way around. Uh, I used something similar here uh, for this still life. Oops, sorry. So it's a uh, eruptive, eruptive material from uh, Java Island in Indonesia. And if I want to see the texture of the stone here, I can use soft boxes but I have to use them the right way around, okay? So if I go with the softbox just straight on, if I use them in, in the center, if I pull, position the model or the, the object here in the center of the light, all these little holes here of this stone material will be filled with light. I, I will not have the feeling of, of this. I will just have a more or less green, brownish thing, but I will not be able to feel uh, the texture. At the same time, um, these are two backlights, so a backlight here and a backlight here, uh, there on this side. And then because I tilt the softbox, again, I can create here these gradations. Okay, so backlight, that's always a, a, a nice a nice light to, to work out the forms. And then this light disappears. And then the, the softbox comes, but it's tilted away. Then the softbox disappears again. And the, the um, backlight on the other side takes over. And only when I work very careful with, um, with these kind of uh, gradations that the, the edges of the softbox offer and that the hard, 
the hard light actually of the soft boxes at the edges, then I can work out beautifully these textures. Right, okay, good. And just a quick example from a, a seminar in China. Just go on full screen. Okay, um, what you see here is um, that we have the, the black dressed model in a nice halo of light. So we have nice um, dark areas all around. On this side here, again, it's nothing else than tilting the softbox away. It's, it's a single light. Um, okay, it's a single light. And the degradation here I receive um, because I tilt the softbox away. Tilting the softbox away makes the light harder. So down here you can see a, a relatively harsh shadow. And this I use on the right side to, um, to, to create the, the light fall off on the right side of the photograph. Good. All right. So, and then we are going back and I would like to have a quick look at questions. Um, what is the difference? So we, we get something uh, Mr. M is asking or Mrs. M is asking, what is the difference between, um, oh, now it changed, a uh, uh, six by four softbox and a uh, one on 50 centimeter as light shape. Um, so the, the six by four softbox, so the rectangular softbox um, is, has just, um, yeah, four sides. Okay, so you might have the, the appearance of the shadows are, is not that natural. So if you work with it uh, super soft, okay, then the, the shadows are extremely soft. But um, I think a good example is if you shoot furniture um, and if you have a rectangular softbox or a square softbox on furniture, the, the shadows sometimes can appear a little, so, uh, a little strange because um, let's say from, from a table, the, the vertical plate throws the different shadows than um, uh, the horizontal plate, sorry, throws a different shadow than the vertical uh, leg of the of the of the table or whatever. And uh, the octagonal soft boxes, of course, the the shadow has the same characteristics in all directions. So um, if, as I said before, if the shadows are an important part of your photographs, the rounder you go, the more. Yeah, the, the, the less corners you have, or the more corners you have, the rounder you go with the softbox, the more natural your shadows appear. So I take one more. Okay, how to make a circle of light in the background. That's uh, something else. Uh, that's not about softboxes. Um, I was talking about the, the tilting soft boxes. It's uh, it has nothing to do with the camera. It has nothing to do with the background. So if this is the the let's say the model and this is the the light I'm illuminating the model. If you tilt the soft box around, you you will get a gradation to the right side. Okay. So by tilting the soft box, sooner or later the the right part of the the background will be behind the soft box and not become any any. Uh, illumination. So that's how you can create gradations um, on the softbox without having to add additional lights on the background. Okay, good. So I think it's time to jump over to accessories. And we have different accessories that I, I want you to, uh, to show. And the first one is the, the third diffuser. For this, I'm going to Right, okay. So this is now uh, a larger friend. This is the 90 by 120 softbox. The size, so the construction is always the same, intermediate diffuser, main diffuser, but for this one, I also have now a third diffuser. And now what I hear a lot, oh, I want the extra, uh, an extra soft light, so let's add a third diffuser. You don't have to do it for this reason, okay? So if you add the third diffuser, you will see that it cuts a little bit here the edges. 
So the edges of the soft boxes, they are never 100% clean. Okay, they might be wrinkled. The illumination might not be 100% even all the way out um, to the corners. And that's why the third diffuser is not really making the light even softer because it, we, we use, I explained this before, we use very good um, diffusing material. So the, the intermediate and the main diffuser, they already take care that the light is soft enough. And the third diffuser is just guaranteeing me that I have it sharp etched. So again, if I want to create or if I have to use a softbox on shiny objects, like, I don't know, watches, jewelry, bottles, and so on and so on, it's important that these, the highlights, that the reflections on the object surface are sharp etched. Okay, and that's what the third diffuser is doing. Theoretically, it's even shrinking a little, little bit the, the size of the softbox. So theoretically, it's a tiny little bit uh, harder, but at least it's sharp etched. If you want to use the intermediate, uh, the, the main diffuser, if you want to leave the main diffuser in or take it out, that's absolutely up to you. And it doesn't really change the light a lot. All right, good. Then we have a different accessory that I would like to show you now. Which is here, exactly. So, black diffuser. What is this for? Huh? It's not all the way black, but it, it actually um, blocks a lot of the light in the center. And that's the one for the 60 by 100. So, to show you what it does, I probably have to take the corresponding softbox. Right? And now here, however, I definitely recommend that you take the main diffuser away. Because as you can see, there's a lot of light being blocked in, in the center. So um, with the black fabric. So it doesn't really make sense to, yeah, to have an additional diffuser that blocks even more light. So in this situation, I recommend that you take the main diffuser out. And we plug in this one. All right, so while the third, the, the third diffuser, this additional third diffuser is available for all soft boxes, for strip lights, for rectangular ones, square ones, and uh, octagonal ones. However, the edge mask, we call this an edge mask, is only available for the rectangular soft boxes because most of the cameras, they still shoot rectangles and there it makes a lot of sense. So if, you're the photographers, you're shooting an object that's maybe here or a portrait that's in front of this uh, dark center of the background. You will have, of course, like uh, four strip lights all around, illuminating the edges of a portrait or of, a, of an object very, very nicely without any interruption. So this light is going all the way through without any interruption. So with a single light, you can perfectly illuminate the edge of an object. I would like to show you two photographs. The first one would be this point. So this is just one single light. Okay, um, in front of the background. And I just a little bit of the light um, into the face. We will only get uh, Okay, another example would be this from So, this uh, product shot of a move pack. And you see that it's feeding. And uh, the light, this contour light, has no single interruption all around. Let me check. It's everything. Um, I can't see anything. Yeah. 
Um, I just that you can't hear me, that we have a microphone problem. Sorry for that. Okay. Maybe this is better like that now. Okay. I try to move a little less. Okay. So what we see with this, uh, uh, this is Edinburgh, that you have one perfect contour all around without any interruptions. Let's say the portrait that you have seen before could be possible with uh, a few uh, strip lights, maybe three strip lights. But if your object starts to be, to be a little bit more shiny, then um, of course, if I try to do this with uh, several strip lights, I will definitely have an interruption of my light here. So there, the, um, this edge mask comes in very, very handy. All right, good. So, flipping back to my presentation. And probably the, the last accessory I would like to show you is the grids. So, Again, 90 by 120 centimeter softbox. And I think it's um, heavily underestimated to use um, honeycomb grids um, on a softbox. Why? Um, sorry. Somehow my, my, my microphone seems not to work the way I want it. So we just uh, plug this in somewhere else. Okay, so I hope this works better now. Okay, and um, so most of the time I hear, okay, I would like to have a harsher light, so uh, let's uh, give me some honeycomb grids. Honeycomb grids do not make the light harder, okay? Because they're not changing the, the, um, the size of the light shaper. And what they do, in the studio is they limit the light angle. So a softbox has a light angle of 180 degrees. And with the grids, I can limit this light angle. So the, the light angle is not 180 degrees anymore. So maybe some, I don't know, 90 degrees, 80 degrees, at least I can direct the light a little bit. So there are two reasons to use this. The first reason is the reason that uh, everyone is familiar with, if you would like to have a gradation. Let's say if you don't want the, the, the light even all over the body, um, you can of course direct the light a little bit more. You can have the, the light more on the face and with a gradation down to the legs or vice versa or the other way around. But in my eyes, more important is that we have more uh, contrast control, especially for those working in small, rather bright studios. Um, if you have a light angle of 180 degrees, the light bounces back from the white walls, uh, from white ceilings, from the floor, and unintentionally um, brightens up your shadows. So the smaller and the brighter your studio, the more important it is that you are using grids in front of your, uh, in front of your soft boxes. Because only in this situation, you have the chance to work with high contrast light, because you can avoid any indirect illuminations. Right, okay, grids, um, just like the 30 fuser, available for every softbox, every octabox, uh, regardless of the size. The only thing that, that's actually limited is, as I said, um, the edge masks. Edge masks are only available for the straight, uh, for the rectangular softboxes. Last accessory, and then we summarize it is nothing else but a strip mask. Okay, it's the opposite. It's like the negative of the edge mask. So it covers the, the corners and only lets pass the light in the middle. And these strip masks, obviously they are used, used on strip light shaped soft boxes, like the 3120 or the 30 by 180 centimeters. You can just make these um, lights even more aggressive, even more extreme. Of course, then, uh, then they are super, super hard left, right. And this, of course, gives you additional um, 
control over the light, for example, if you want to work with softbox and flags to, to flag off uh, several or specific areas of the shot, then um, these strip masks, they limit the surface, they make the light harder and like this, more controllable. Okay, um, time is running like crazy, so I would like to, to summarize. And for this, I'm going to show you one more photograph. And that's this one. Okay, so it's a, a photograph I took to actually um, illustrate the, the possibilities of, uh, of softboxes. On the right side, you can see uh, uh, octagonal softboxes and the black flag in front of it. I chose here not an edge mask because my object is round and very, very shiny. So I wanted this line not to be once a little thicker because it's uh, reflecting the corner of a softbox and then becoming thinner at the, uh, at the edges. So that's why I kind of uh, improvised here, an edge mask with an octagonal softbox and something in front of it. Um, this is responsible for the, this perfect uninterrupted highlight all around the helmet. Okay, then thanks to the 30 diffuser um, on a 30 by 120 softbox, I can actually use the light that's coming directly from the softbox. And this is a very, very, very nice reflection from a textile softbox. I mean, all the other light shapes like uh, strip lights, uh, box lights and so on, they're all acrylic. But with the 30 fuser, we get really super, super close to a perfect illumination. This is the shot uh, that I store in my, in my portfolio to illustrate light. So this is not even retouched yet. And you see down here, it's a little, little bit wrinkly. Um, but of course, this is like just a, a few minutes and this will be, be, would be retouched. What you see here, these double contours, they have nothing to do with the softbox. This is just a double reflection in the, in the helmets. Um, yeah, um, at this part of the helmet, no idea how this is called. Right, okay, so what else is in the, in the setup? You can see that there's a light coming from the, from the right, but there is actually, after the contour, there's a dark area as well here that's not illuminated. And this only stays dark because of the angle of the softbox. So I angled the softbox away in order to separate the contour light from the, um, the main light. Okay, so this of course creates much more three-dimensionality, uh, creates these nice contours and is essential to show the shape of the object. The last softbox is the, the 90 by 120. And in the diagram, it should illustrate that it's quite far away because here in the, in the center of the helmet, I have this um, metallic area, which should create some reflection. So if I go too close with the softbox, again, the softbox uh, would not create any shine. It would be too soft. That's what we saw uh, in the very first portrait. And this will be the subject in one week. Next week, we will talk about this, how to create, uh, how to control shine with nothing else than the light shape. Okay, so this is the last photograph I wanted to show to you, which means I can go back now to the camera and check again if there are any questions. Please explain that portrait photo. Uh, of course, I don't know which portrait photo. Um, okay, can, can we use parabolic um, very close to the same, like soft boxes? Um, most probably parabolic, you talk about paras. Um, you can use them over short, very short distances as well, but for a different reason. If you use a parabolic, uh, parabolics, they have, um, it's a direct light, so it's not, it doesn't become a lot softer, but if you work with a par parabolic over very short distances, with a parabolic, the, if you defocus it, especially the, the center of the reflect becomes rather dark and you have like a, a huge ring flash. So if you work with a, with a para, uh, preferably rather large paras like a 177 or, or the triple two over very short distances, you will get a lot of 
three dimensionality, but uh, the light is not really becoming a lot softer. So it's a, it's a different thinking, but um, it's always, no matter what you use, it's always very important that you change and play with distances. So bring it super close, put it far away, focus, defocus it, and always open your eyes and look what, what, happen, uh, what happens. So yes, parabolics, paras over short distances, yet, yes, but for a different, for a different reason. Okay. Then, okay. And, okay, I think this was it. Right, okay, so um, let's bring the camera back in the normal position. So um, I just uh, checked, there's uh, one more question about um, how to create a circle in the background. Uh, so um, if you are far away, also I mean, um, circles in the background, this means unevenly illuminated background. So there are two options. Number one is the model is far away from the background. So the, the, the light you have on the model does not actually illuminate your background. Then you can do on the background what, whatever you want. Essential for this is if the model is far away from the background and you do not want to have any light from a softbox on the background, you have to go very close um, to the object or to the model. Because if you are far away, then the, the background is just a little bit further away and will be illuminated as well. So if you want to be independent from the location, if you don't want that your light spreads to the ceiling, to the wall and going back to the model or illuminates the, the background unwanted, go close with your lights and then your setup becomes a local thing. And then uh, you can, of course, illuminate the background with additional lights like uh, honeycomb grids or whatever. On the other side, if you do not have the, the space to take the model far away um, from the background, there's another trick. And that's what I showed, uh, what I tried to explain before. So if the softbox is straight on me, of course it hits the background as well, okay? But now you can start tilting the softbox away. When I'm standing here, I still get all the light, okay? But the background, especially the left part of the background, is like behind the softbox. So in this situation, you can control the light on the background at the same time, um, uh, or with the same light shaper as you're illuminating the, the model. Be aware that by tilting the softbox away, that, I, that it's becoming for me, for the model, more like a strip light, okay? So be aware that maybe you have to use a little bit more makeup to, to, to matten the skin, because uh, like this, the, the light is super matte, super soft. You cannot expect any unwanted reflections, but if you turn the softbox in a harder angle, you get the effect you want on the background, but the light on me becomes somewhat harsher. Right, let me have a last quick look at questions. Okay, good. Um, there was one last question coming in, but it was about paras, and we are not talking about paras today, it's about softboxes. So this means that I would like to uh, finish it here. But as I did not answer this question, join me on Friday again. So Friday, um, 2 p.m. Swiss timing, or whatever time in your countries, join me again during a Instagram live question chat. And um, again, I would like to invite you next uh, next week, we still talk about soft boxes, but uh, with less equipment, but uh, somewhat uh, less soft boxes. But we have a model here, very nice model, and we talk about how you can influence the appearance of the skin regarding shine, color, and even saturation with nothing else than moving soft boxes around. So it will be uh, essential for those that are shooting fashion portraits, uh, beauty photographers. So uh, tune in again uh, exactly one week from now, same, same time, same place. And um, right after this, as soon as we logged out, you will get a survey. So please fill in the questionnaire. This is the very first seminar of a very first webinar of a long series. So very important for us to get some feedback. Uh, what can we improve? Um, what can we make better next week? and then um, as well for a future uh, series of webinars what subject what topic are you most interested in
Okay, so I apologize. Uh, of course, it takes always longer uh, than expected, uh, especially for the first time. So I apologize for the delay. I hope it was worth the time for you joining. And uh, yes, from, from me and from the entire team that uh, set this up. Thank you very much and hope to see you in a future webinar very soon. Bye-bye.